Pete. Sir Pete, if you don't mind me calling you that. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for coming in to see us. Um, can't actually believe I've got you sitting in the chair in front of me. Um, big icon for me when I started fishing, a big inspiration for me. Um, and thank you so much for coming in to see us. We're um, honoured, shall we say. Um, always nice when we start these interviews off just to chat a little bit, Pete, and where you're from and you know a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born in Battersea. Uh, lived uh, not far from the River Thames. I had a pond up the road just a, a just at the top of my road uh, and I suppose that's where I uh, got interested in water like because at the time it just fascinated me and then I used to go up there with a jam jar and get me uh, sticklebacks uh, stickle, you know little red things and uh, they used to look big in the jam jar like and then my uncle it was lucky because my uncle uh, he was a fisherman and he lived in the same house as me it was like me mum and dad, we had the, like, the ground floor and they had the upstairs. Mm. And uh, he took me fishing. We used to go on the back of his bike and we'd cycle off somewhere. And uh, he was the one that sort of got me into fishing. And then they used to rent a boat every year on the Thames, a little cruiser sort of thing. And we used to go on holidays with them. And, fish for roach and whatever I could catch like and eventually um, my uncle got me a rod and it was like a bamboo rod with the with the rings taped on yeah. sort of thing and that's where I sort of started fishing got the bug and then uh, I see a rod a split cane three piece float rod in a second hand shop next to the record shop that I used to go to and uh, saved up my money bought that and it all really started from there really just sort of rolled on from there yeah, and yeah. so obviously you started on the rivers worked your way up so when was it like the, the should we say you just done your general course and we got a little picture of you there actually of, <laughs> with yeah. young Pete Springate there is that with the, the, the said rod there or yeah probably yeah uh, yeah the old roach little roach uh, I used to have blonde hair then. <laughs> <laughs> and this was but fishing on the little pond or the. Or, or no, that was on the Thames. That right. was, yeah, yeah, funny enough. Um, yeah, I, I didn't start fishing on the pond properly until I got this uh, roach, uh, this float rod. Mm. And uh, I always remember going with my schoolmate and he broke a branch up a tree, like, tied a bit of line to it and an hook. Because in them, they didn't even have proper hooks. Like, I used to get a, uh, a safety pin, break it, and then curl it up as a hook, like, you know, tie that on. And um, I thought to myself, oh, I've got the rod, like, you know, oh, I'm going <laughs> to catch the fish. And he bloody caught, I don't know, three or four fish, and I didn't have nothing. And I thought, bloody hell, that ain't fair. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was just, uh, that's how it was in them days, like, you know. And... I used to sort of go over there early morning because there was two ponds. There was one right at the top of my road and then a bit further over there was the other pond. This is Ponsworth Common I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. And um, I used to go around the lake collecting the feathers because I used to try and make my own floats and all that out of the feathers, yeah. like, you know. Um, no, it was just great. It was just bit, well, it's just a kids thing, wasn't it? You know. Yeah. I mean, in them days, you didn't have to. I was never at home. I used to, if my mum wanted me, she knew where I'd be. I'd be around one of the ponds, like you know. Safe days then as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nowadays, yeah. You know. What was you lo using for line out of curiosity then? What sort of line was you? Oh, I, I couldn't tell you. I can't remember that. It's obviously, no. line technology now is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I, I know I'd sent the pin reels. Mm. but I can't remember what sort of line it was or anything so you was using safety clips or, 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 or uh, maybe clips as hooks shall we yeah, say yeah. <laughs> to catch your fish and then you sort of done this sort of fishing and then somewhere along the road obviously the carp bug hit yeah you. well the carp bug didn't hit me for a, quite some time until after uh, that because uh, it was unheard of then I suppose really carp fishing was yeah, it yeah that's it yeah I mean it was it was hardly any people going carp fishing, but uh, 
but uh, I, there was carp in at ones ones with common pond. Uh, I see one or two of them swimming about, and then I read you could catch them on floating crust. Yeah, you know, at night, you know. So I went over there and I laid my rod on the ground with the crust just touching the water, like, and sat there for hours at night. And all the little fish would come <laughs> round nibbling at it, like. And I mean, I used to sit there thinking to myself, wait a minute, a big carp's going to come up and slurp that down. But it never bloody did, <laughs> like, you know. But I used to bunk off school, especially at the start of the, the season, sort of in June. And going tench fishing, like you know, uh, caught quite a few tench out of there and whatever. And then I sort of, I don't know, became got. A t I was like a teenager then, and then uh, I started going out with this girl, uh, Pat, her name was, and um, her dad, he was a fisherman, and uh, I got on well with him, and he used to, he was a a pigeon fancier as well yeah. and he was well known in the pigeon world for good pigeons anyway he said to me he said oh he said uh, do you fancy going fishing next weekend I said yeah yeah where, where are we going to go he said I don't know he said I've heard of this place uh, he said uh, Hall and Co have started up a new thing like you know and I said oh right so we got a ticket was, I think it was five guineas and uh because he had a car yeah and uh, we drove over there and I couldn't believe the size of this ball but like but and it was all overgrown and whatever but we fished I can't remember where we, I don't think we caught anything but we see a bloke on the other bank by this willow tree and I see him have about three or four tench like and that I thought oh bloody hell like you know and it was just a progression from there like because uh, I started fishing more seriously. Mm. Uh, what sort of age was you roughly when, when this was going on? I don't know what age. I was a teenager, yeah. like, you know, I went, uh, I don't know, really. But I, it might have been before that that I went uh, some waters at Hersham. Oh, no, no, see, yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, he's coming back to me now. <laughs> see, it's a long, t such a long time ago. No, we first went to Barn Elms Reservoir, which is now a, uh, a wildlife place. Yeah. But at the time, Barn Elms Reservoir was like four reservoirs, 50 foot up in the air. And we went there roach fishing because there was some big roach in them, like, and you'd sit there all day with two rods out, one with a uh, bread flake on and one with a worm on, and you might get one bite. And But it'd be like a two pound roach, it might even be bigger, or it could be just under two pound, mm. but the roach were quality roach. And Bill Penny caught the record roach from there. He, he had them stuffed in there, there was about four or five of them in a cage, mm. in a glass thingy bob. But um, so that's where we started fishing, and that's where I sort of learned the, the yeah the patience of getting, and it also I learned that this concrete bowl. There was only certain spots where you'd get bites, mm. like you know, and I learned uh, quite a lot fishing, and the wind when the wind got up, it was really. <laughs> But, and we went from uh, Barn Elms, there was another, Knight and Besborough, which was further towards Staines, and that had big roach and bream, and uh, we fished there a few times. And then, then we found out about this Hall and Co starting up this fishing scheme, and we got tickets on there, and that was in 1967. And uh, as I say, we went there to see this bloke, and I thought, bloody hell, the intents look nice, like. So I went back on my own, because I had a car by then, and uh, didn't have no <laughs> bloody gear, like. <laughs> but I, I decided I was going to go and fish it for a week. And I had an old ammunition box, wooden yeah. box, that I made into a wormery <laughs> to keep me worms in, like. <laughs> 
I put that in the back of the motor. I put my 45 inch brolly, canvas brolly in the back of the motor. And I had an old bloody uh, bed chair, plastic <laughs> thing like. Went over there and I, I drove around and I thought, where am I gonna fish? And I ended up fishing a, po a place that they call now call um, Dredger Bay Point. Mm. And there's no trees, and it was hardly in it. And the, they were still working the pit because the bloke in the dredger used to go past, and they was still sucking out. Uh, Dredging it, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he used to give me a wave, like. And I, I stayed there for a whole week. All I had was this canvas brolly <laughs> and this fucking old bloody uh, bed chair. And. Um, after a few days, this bloke in the dredger, he come round to see me. <laughs> Take pity on you. <laughs> no, he said to me, he said, I've never seen anybody fish, but stay in this place for so, 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 so long, like, you know. I said, yeah, well, I thought I'd give it to you. And uh, anyway, I, I managed to catch the tench, and the only way I could catch him, because it was thick weed, mm. Canadian pond weed and what have you, and I knew the tench were there, like, and uh, the only way I could catch him was using bread flake, big lumps of bread flake, with a swan shot about two inches away. Mm. And that was the, all I had. Cast it out, and it used to flutter down onto the thing. And I caught loads of tench like that, you know. And um, from then, I got to know a couple of other blokes that were fishing there, Alf and Fr Fred and Alf. They come from North London, like. And we sort of teamed up for a year or two, mm. and they used to come by train. And they, in them days, the old bed chairs we used to have that canvas. You know, you could take yeah, it yeah, off yeah. with a bloody string. <laughs> they used to throw the frames in the water on a bit of string, and leave them there so they didn't have to bloody carry the bed chairs. You know, <laughs> so they removed the the material, yeah, yeah. rub them in. Yeah, and then when they come next time, they pulled them out, <laughs> and they used to get. Uh, black plastic uh, rubbish sacks and put if, if they got any food or anything or gear they hid them in the bushes like you know <laughs> and that's uh, <laughs> and in them days you could fish off of one of the islands because they had like a a barge going yeah. across and uh, used to get onto the island and this bloke, there was a bloke there, we, we thought he was the uh, proper carp angler, like, and he was telling us he was baiting up the end of the island right. with his potatoes. And we thought, oh, bloody hell, he must know something. So we made a couple of swim, swims just down from him on the side, uh, which had a channel up against another island sort of thing. Anyway, to start of the season, we've gone down there and we... we <laughs> <laughs> we put a keep net in one side a keep net in the other side that was going to be for roach that was going to be for bream or the, it might be tench like you know yeah. but we were so confident of catching right <laughs> and um, we've gone there and um, I think well straight away we had uh, tufty trouble we kept, kept catching these tufties <laughs> on the body bait and we weren't using uh, any boilies or anything because they hadn't even been caught of. Then, no. And uh, this bloke was fishing on the, with his potatoes, like, and he'd come round. He said, "Oh, I just lost a big fish, like, blah blah blah." Oh, Jesus Christ! Anyway, I think we had one or two bream and tench, like, and we went back like the next weekend. And Fred worked at this uh, graveyard. He was a grave digger. So he was bringing down loads of worms, like, for us. <laughs> <laughs> Well-fed oh, worms. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable, like. And then we got to know this bloke, who was supposed to be the top carp angler, and he was putting potatoes in, <laughs> not even cooking them or nothing, <laughs> like. And I thought, yeah. yeah. And in the end, what we'd done, we, we made a, a hangman's noose and <laughs> hung it in the swim of his <laughs> And it was there for years, like, you know. But um, no, it was all all a learning curve, like you know. So was it that was your first carp from that lake? Was it was you sort of progress on from the tension, then the carp just arrived? Yeah, well, what happened was 
I was going over there tench fishing, you know, quite often. And then I I uh, I started a new job, uh, working for Hoover, and uh, I that close season, uh, I started seventy three. This was I started with Hoover, and I had to go on a five week course, like which was in the close season. I thought, well, that's handy. <laughs> 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 And so I went on this course, and then when I come back, they said to me, oh, you have to go out with another engineer uh, for a couple of weeks. Anyway, it turned out that this other engineer was uh, a bloke called Kenny Odder, who I'd never met before, I'd never seen, but he was a fisherman. So we got on quite well together, and he said to me, oh, what are you, what are you doing next weekend? I said, I'm going to Raysbury, I'm going fishing. He said, oh yeah, where, where are you going? He said, I said, Raysbury. I said, the, it's open during the close season. They've started a scheme where, you know, you can fish during the close season. He said, oh, he said, oh, he said uh, I might come over. I said, yeah. I, I said, I told him where I'd be, like, and I had a motor caravan then. Mm. And uh, I'd par parked my motor caravan up and uh, I'd been fishing all night and I've gone back to the caravan and I was having a kip. He's turned up, and at the time I was going out with his girl Sue, and she was in the carrier, and he's sort of knocked on the thing, and he said, there's Peter back. She said, he's asleep at the moment. <laughs> so he said, oh, it's all right. He said, I'll go and fish in this bay here, like. And um, anyway, when I woke up, and she told me he was here, I've gone to see him, and he put his rods, he was a bream fisherman, mm. and uh, he put his, I said to him here, I said, uh, only, it's a nice spot I said but the only thing is I said there's a car down here I said you're going to get snagged up like oh right he's going and he moved to wherever and um, it was one of them weekends when I was in the caravan that I see this car in Rosebury for the first time absolutely bloody smashing the weed beds to bits like where they were spawning and I couldn't believe what I was seeing because mm. at the time they were 20 pound fish like, but I hadn't seen fish like that before. And uh, so I've got me rod and I've got some bread flake and I'm trying or him, but they didn't want to know like, but it all always stuck in my mm. mind like about, about these fish. And then after that, uh, fishing for the old tench and whatever, uh, I got to know my best mate was uh, a guy called Johnny Perkins, and we met through Fred, who was the ang who was the uh, uh, the dad of this Pat who I was going with. Yeah. His best mate, who he worked with, they both worked at a chrome factory in North London. Yeah. Well. During the winter times, we during the winter we used to go pike fishing. So we've gone off, we've gone pike fishing, and Fred said to me one week, and he said, "Oh, he said we're meeting up with my mate Alan." He said, and he's bringing his mate. Up. I said, "Oh, right, okay." And we went to a place called Thorpe Park, yeah. which you now know is, but this was before it was all. And we pike fished there, and we had several pike. I know that. I know I run out of bait in the end like dead baits and whatever and uh, me and John got on that like a house on fire mm. and then we became best friends and we and anyway coming back to it by this time John said to me he said oh he said I uh, found a little lake he said it's, it's, it's tucked away he said but there's a few carp in it he said uh, do you fancy come out there next weekend I said yeah I said we're around he said Stan Stabitz Oh, no, so like, yeah, yeah. so uh, we've gone up there, and sure enough, we see these carp, and uh, we started fishing. We had some nice carp out of there, and this was the time when you was making your own paste, with yeah. his, you know, paste baits, and we was putting little bits of crust pads behind the hook so it didn't fly off mm. the hook when you cast in. And uh, oh, we had. Quite a number of carp out of there. So your first carp was from Stanford, or Abbotsford, yeah. as we call it now. Yeah. So you travelled a fair way, actually, because yeah. I used to live 
right literally next door to a place called Royden. And I had it on a nine foot little ledger rod. Wow. And I ate this fish. I always remember it. It was it was a nine nine and a half pounds, something like that. Yeah. And it nearly got me into the reeds, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, I, and when I bloody got it in, and I tell you what, the bait was and all. Cool. Uh, John had made this paste out of peas, and mushy uh, peas. Yeah. <laughs> And he said, oh, try this, Pete. He said, I made this up. He said, see, but, you know, we try this this weekend. And I put a bit of that on, and that's what I hooked this fish on. And, of course, once I booked it and I played it and got it in, now I was a carp hanger yeah. from then on. You it's know, in the, it was in unbelievable. The like, yeah. But that was before we started. Then we started catching loads of carp in there, like, you know. Yeah. And I remember one time we'd gone up there in the winter, and we fished like the big lake at uh, what's it? And it was absolutely freezing. And all we had was well, forty five inch brolly. <laughs> no bloody none of all this Nothing gear like got to get, get out. No. And we found a place in North London, a, an army surplus place, and we got some mounty uh Canadian mounty boots, which were big sort of rubber boots on the bottom but leather uppers yeah. you know and they had uh, thermal linings that you could pull out and they also had a thick uh, thing in the bottom which, with a mesh on so you didn't get the condensation yeah on. so the cold didn't rise yeah. on, on yeah oh, well, once we got there we thought it was, it, yeah, you know you're really I mean? yeah there. But, uh, so then naturally obviously look at this picture of you here because you were telling us about these rods a minute ago then obviously it progressed on yeah, the and yeah. alarms and then I went back to uh, Yately because I'd been to Yately a few times tench fishing uh, but this is this is the car park lake right at uh, yeah, Yately yeah. and uh, those rods were 10 foot one piece so one piece it, rod yeah uh, me and John got them made. They, what was the blanks? They'd done some rods, uh, three, two, one, or one, two, three uh, blanks. I forget the up. I can't remember. Simps, Jack Simpson's old one. No, no. There was a, there was a certain blank. Uh, a fiberglass blank was that. Yeah. 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 Um, it was like honeycomb coloured. But they were lovely rods. Mm. Really was. The only problem was transporting them, but lucky enough, I found, uh, I think they were for trout people, like, you could buy these little fucking, little uh, brackets that went over, on the old cars, you used to have a ridge, yeah. and they used to hang over the ridge, and then a suction pad, and you could, t you could oh, that's right, had it like a screw thread, so you could tighten them up onto the thing, right, and it had like three grooves, so, so you could have three rods and they used to <laughs> sit down yes yeah, sit down the side of the van because by then I was working for Hoover and then they used to sit them down the van like you know along the side of the van crazy but, now, uh, now you get all these collapsible rods that go down to yeah. nothing and you've been yeah. driving around stuck on the side of your van nine yeah. foot rods yeah. going down so you know You've, you've got the carp bug by now. Obviously, you can see you've got the heron alarms here. You've got yeah. your, your, your free rods and things like that. And now you're really in your carp. Did you sort of drop all other fish in then? Was it now just carp yeah, only? Yeah, mainly just carp, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and you started to get a bit of a name for yourself down the road a little bit, you know. Um, obviously, you go through some historic braces catches that we'll look into in a little while. But as a person, you've always been quite a private person with your fishing. You know, you could have been paid by loads of companies you could have been sponsored and, and, a, and a paid angler why did you never take that route because as I've always treated f uh, fishing or the, this yeah. you know whether you're carp fishing or what to me it's just fishing uh, it's been a hobby mm. and I I don't know. I've been approached by a few people bet, yeah. over the years mm. that told me they was going to make me into a superstar and Christ knows what. Uh, and to me, it's just... Uh, it's just not you. No. Nah. Your fishing is your I, fishing. I fish for myself. I don't want to be fishing because I've got to please someone else. You know mm. what I mean? 
it's just uh, I've always done my own thing and I don't I just didn't want the pressures maybe of yeah the, and of I don't think I'd get the, I'd get the uh, enjoyment that I've I've had out of fishing mm. you know it's just uh, that's just me just wasn't you wasn't mm. your cup of tea because obviously look you, you've written a lot of books um, some fascinating books and, and again it's not all carp fishing with you and obviously down the oh, road no, we'll talk right. about other um, species of, of fish that you've caught and whatnot but obviously you are generally known for your, your, your big carp that you've caught yeah. so we're just going to quickly as well we just want to tap into a little bit with Raysbury with you because we had Dave Lane in a couple of weeks ago obviously you fish his yeah. Raysbury uh, to currently now but you fished Raysbury when there was hardly any trees around it yeah uh, you, you sort of tapped us up a little bit a minute ago why you, you saw these big fish topping in Raysbury and that's what yeah. sort of made you think oh, I want to come back and catch these so yeah. just explain a little bit about um, certainly what year was this and you know a little bit about Raysbury when you first went on there yeah well that was probably I would say oh when I see them fish spawning was probably about uh, 73 I wasn't uh, even born then <laughs> <laughs> but I'd fished there for pike and uh, tench quite regular because me and Johnny used to go there tench fishing and whatever. But then we got on to Darrant and that's where I learned a lot of my carp fishing. Going on to Darrant, I spent two or three years on Darrant. Mm. But it was always in my mind to go back to Raysbury. And then in that time, uh, they opened up a water called Longfield, which yeah. is Fox Pool. Yeah. So I fished there, but eventually I got back on the Raysbury, and uh, I don't know, I just see these fish, and I just got fell in love with it. Mm. And what I liked about it was the fact it was unknown. It was. Uh, you didn't really know what was in there but there was one guy fishing it who was in the beach because by this time i'd joined the, i got into the beach yeah <coughs> we used to hold our meetings in stains or chris ball held them in stain at a place called the crooked belly and uh old uh, jack hilton mm. Tom Mintram and that they used to come to the meetings Jack not often but uh, every now and again he'd come to the meetings and uh, it was just down the road from Raysbury like which was sort of handy and uh, there was this one guy fishing Raysbury uh, I forget his name now but he'd been all, all year spent a whole year at Raysbury fishing for what he thought was a record carp and I spoke to him and he told me he had seen this big carp swimming about and I think it was a year I don't know it was either that year when I when he was on there I got a feeling it was that I see this carp and it was swimming along um, the North Lake the railway bank yep and I had a real good view of it and it was at the record the record at the time was 44 pound Walker's record yeah and this fish was I would say it was around about that size and uh, I thought it was a bloody hell this <laughs> you know. so that's give me another reason the fish there like uh, never caught that one i reckon it died because it was it looked a bit spawny like you know mm. but um yeah i spent uh many <laughs> yeah because it's, it's a big lake as well i'm about around yeah. 120 acres well chris as well. chris as well he come down to see me and he <laughs> said me christ almighty mate. he said this is uh what did he say oh something about one uh ah oh, he come out with like some ocean basically. yeah like an ocean he says it's like one man fishing a bloody big ocean like you know yeah. and all this and he uh, funny enough the day he came to see me uh on the far bank was a guy called dave crumpstone 
who'd been fishing on there with a pike and whatever and he caught a pike and old Chris said to me he's, he's caught something over there I said yeah it's probably a pike he said oh sh we go round and see him I said yeah alright I said I'll introduce you to him then we walked over by the time we got round that pike was in the pot he was cooking it to oh. eat like yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, Chris <laughs> couldn't believe it he, oh, he really couldn't believe it like you know yeah. crazy so you're fishing a big lake um, the big unknown you've seen one big yeah. fish in there um, there's not many carp anglers really around you've got the British Carp Study Group that yeah. seemed to be the main group of yeah. UK anglers at the time really didn't it all got yeah. together and, and created the BCSG um, so anyway you're fishing this great big lake it's a monstrous place you've not really got any other carp anglers on there but how on earth, you know, how on earth did you approach a lake like that just purely going down walking around a lot, looking, and uh, because I'd been tench fishing a, a lot on there, I got to know the lake pretty well. And the funny thing was, I noticed, or me and uh, the South, we found that uh, Douglas Lane, the bank at Douglas Lane there, down towards Peter Bryant's point, mm. that was the best place to fish for tench in the morning because the sun was getting on it first and things like that no the sun just, was just behind you funny enough right okay. we, thought it, we thought it'd be the other way around yeah. but in the morning that's when we caught the tench in the afternoon if you wanted any tench you had to go into Douglas Lane and fish that bank yeah okay. it's weird weird really weird and uh, so I got to know a lot of the lake and I got to know sort of roughly how uh, things worked on yeah you know hand out uh it's hard to explain it really it's just mm. uh you get like a sixth sense and um uh, always remember it just shows you terry lampard was down fishing for tench when we was uh when one at some point mm. in the t in that period of time and he was fishing and uh he caught a tench his mate Tim Norman he was fishing in the North Lake uh, Terry Lampard caught this tench in the South Lake down by Douglas Lane Tim Norman caught the same tench in the afternoon in the North Lake no yeah oh god yeah that's just crazy isn't it but uh yeah, no, it was, uh, it's, tra it's mad how they travel so far, you yeah. know. But did you pre-bait? Was it pre-baiting on there or anything? Yeah, or? Not, not... And there's still no boilie at this point either. This is all just... Oh, no, you got, you probably got to boilies by now. Right. like Because I've been down to, uh, to Darren, fishing in Darren. Yeah. Got to learn. I used to fish, like, with Fred Wilton and all mm. them. Got to uh, Lee Jackson and all that. Yeah, yeah. Got, and we, because in, when I first down there it was all three line stuff and mm. he used to bury the hook in the bait you know how we caught I don't know <laughs> but uh, we did and we learned I learned so much from that experience over the couple of years two or three years that I went down there and um, by the time I got back to Raysbury I'd found out about Borley's because Fred Wilton had brought uh, you know, his thing out. I mean, I always remember Fred saying to me, he said, uh, Bob over there, that was Bob Morris. Bob he, Morris, yeah. He said, he's got a list of a, a hundred different flavours. And I thought, bloody hundred different flavours? Where does he get them from? Because <laughs> I couldn't think of that many, like, you know. Uh, never thought about artificial flavours, like, you know. And... Um, that's another thing, see. I've got a... Uh, we used to get our flavours from Rainers in yeah. North London. And me and John, we got like an account with them so that we could get whatever we wanted sort of thing. But we put the account in John's name. And I found out a few, a couple of years later after, after we sort of had... that people were phoning up asking for the same bloody <laughs> uh, flavour that Pete Springate said. And they, they, they say to them, well, Pete Springate hasn't had anything from us. He ain't been. 
uh, because they didn't know I was using it was through John's name that was right. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it was a right. Uh, it was an eye opener. That was you know. So what sort of bait, boily flavors was you using then back in those days? Um, uh, strawberry. Uh, well, your sort of classic fruity flavours, was yeah, it really? Or yeah. any fish meals in there at all? It was just mainly, uh, no, it was all milk proteins yeah, at the time, yeah. Um, using strawberries, all, all, all sorts. Uh, oh, why not? I tell you, meat, it was one called meat, and a <laughs> stink, unbelievable, <laughs> like you know, uh, cinnamon. Oh, that's uh, a funny smell, cinnamon. <laughs> uh, loads of different flavours mm. I'll tell you what though we got some cinnamon oil right and we was trying it at Darren and fuck me although it caught fish it also attracted all the rats <laughs> in the brown <laughs> place cause Darren when I fished it when I was a kid was terrible for yeah. rats back then I mean I had rats fucking crawling over <laughs> me when I was asleep fucking in your bag like <laughs> oh it's unbelievable <laughs> it but, was not for a bad rat problem over yeah, there you know yeah. of course even when I was fishing it it was terrible yeah. from then yeah. they'd run up the tree and jump off and actually where you'd hang your rubbish bag yeah. this was before the French fish went in there and I was younger and they'd run up and jump and, and hang off the, off the yeah. rubbish bag it was yeah. terrible for terrible for rats yeah. on there yeah. but um, so in case you've used a mix of different ones we are going to get on to an iconic photo in a minute I think it's the next photo we've got coming up now uh, yeah, <laughs> the same inspired me again because this was ninety two, yeah, about that. Yeah, so you know I was seventeen, just passed me test, and I'll just run us through the story behind this this brace of fish, this iconic photo. Well, it all started the year before, really, because uh, I'd had. The... Well, no, yeah, it was the year before because I went down at the start of the season, John. Had got permission to fish this reservoir down in uh, oh, bloody hell, down in Devon, uh, call, no Devon, uh, near Torquay, down that way, mm. like. And it was in the in the um, what was that? X not Exmoor was it Exmoor? Exmoor, Exmoor. Yeah, yeah. it's a big. Oh, a big place uh, where it's all wild. National like, Park sort of yeah. thing, yeah. And he sent me, he got this uh, permission to fish this trout reservoir called Kennick. And uh, w come down, he said. Uh, he's got I said, well, what are, you what are you fishing for then if it's a trout reservoir? He said, well, they've got carp in there and they want to take them out. I said, oh, right. So... Uh, Anyway, I went down there, had a trip, and I thought, bloody hell, this is lovely, absolutely gorgeous place. And what I couldn't believe was I was following him in my car like, or in my van, and we was going, it was like going up, you know, like in the Alps, <laughs> where you hit all roads, that, yeah. yeah, hairpin bends and that. We was going, travelling up this side of this thing for about five miles, going up and up and up. <laughs> And halfway up, if passed a little post box, uh, office, uh, a little country store like, and a post box outside and a phone box, nothing else around. <laughs> like, and we carried on up, and we eventually we got up there, and it was like being in the clouds, <laughs> like, you know. But there's this bloody trout reservoir, and it was absolutely gorgeous because it was all mowed lawns all the way around few roads and bushes yeah. and all that and it was big you know it was a fair old acreage and um, anyway we fished there he had, had a number of fish but he, he he started off putting some boilies in but he never caught nothing mm. so then he went to sweet corn put some sweet corn in and then he started catching fish so anyway I've gone up there for a I booked a couple of days off and I met him, I think it was a Saturday, we'd gone up there, <laughs> we fished for a couple of days and I'm supposed to go, be going back to work on a Tuesday or the Wednesday night and I thought this is bloody gorgeous up here. I said to him, I think I'm going to phone in sick. <laughs> he said, 
well, he said, there's a phone box out way down, right? So I said, yeah, I said, I don't know what to do, like. So um, I said to him, uh, tell you what, I'm definitely going off sick. I said, we'll go down to the phone box. He said, I'll run you down there. So he'd run down to the phone box and I phoned up. And I said, uh, I've slipped over on the wet <laughs> rock. I twisted my ankle and I can't drive, <laughs> like. So I won't be in the work for the rest of the week. Oh, <laughs> yeah. See how it goes. Anyway, I've gone back and uh, we fished. I didn't catch any. I think I might have lost one. John managed to catch, I think he caught one. But anyway, we had a great week and it was absolutely good. So he'd invite, he invited me back down and this time it was the start of the season. Mm. And I thought, well, I'm going to go down there. Fuck it. Because it was such a lovely place. But in between that t them trips, I'd been to Raysbury looking round and I went with uh, Johnny Allen phoned me up and said uh, about going and having a walk round Raysbury. And it was, a, it was a Saturday and it was absolutely... Uh, if you was going to see any fish, you was going to see him that day. It's one of those days. Yeah. yeah. And we walked all the way round Rosemary, never saw a bloody thing, like. So we parted company, I've gone home. And when I got home, I thought to myself, I can't believe we never saw nothing, like. And I'm thinking about it, and I thought the only place we didn't look was a little bay where a little stream comes in where they had, because they were digging another pit called, uh, what we called Rosemary Free. Mm. They had dug a little channel through to link up in uh, Raysbury and the water was trickling from that pit into Raysbury and I thought so it's the only place we never looked mm. so the next day in the morning I've shot off got me a bag of floaters in them days didn't have mixers and I mean uh, floater cake that I've made yeah gone down there I've gone to this bay and as I've gone to walk into the bay, I nearly trod on them. They was right at Stacked my feet. In there. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, Jesus Christ, and they were good fish, like. So I've, I've thrown out some floaters and one or two started taking, and I crept along the bank a bit, and there was a little tree just sticking over the water. So I managed to get out on the bow of one of the, that tree, like, and I stood there, sort of held on and stood there, and I was trickling bits, in, and I see this one fish and it was big i mean I, I knew straight away it was uh, it was 45 pound whatever it's mary yeah obviously it didn't have a name or anything mm. and uh, i've never seen it before and it took everything i threw <laughs> in there and i couldn't believe it and anyway when i left i got home and i phoned my mate kenny up kenny Odder, and told him what i'd seen right and I thought myself, fuck me, coming to, you know, can't ignore this. this. Yeah. <laughs> so I went down to Kennick, fished there sort of for the weekend, and I thought myself, well, I'm, I, and all the time I was down at Kennick, although I, I, I caught a fish down there, I was thinking about Raysbury, mm. and I said to me, mate, I said, uh, I'm going to shoot off now, I've got to get back to Raysbury. I said, because I'd seen, I told him that I'd seen this fish and how big I thought it was. And um, I fucking <laughs> got to Raysbury and I couldn't believe it. It was like as if there was a match on. There were so many people in the car park and they'd all come down from Yorkshire. <laughs> eh? And I thought, Jesus Christ. Anyway, one of them I knew, the Yorkshire, uh, Sk Richard Skidmore. Yeah. So I said, oh, what's all going on? He said, oh, he said, there's some, been some fish out. He said, there's been three or four. And I thought, fucking hell. <laughs> So I said, what sort of fish? And you know, he's sort of naming whatever fish there were. And uh, I said, uh, anyone had a big? No, no, no. And I told him then what I'd seen, right? Anyway, I'd, um, yeah. So anyway, I fished, but never had anything that way. Anyway, a couple of weeks went by, and then he phoned me up and said to me, um, that he'd seen a lot of fish in the swimming pool get down. Mm. He said, 
they're bound to be in end tomorrow because it was hot like I said no oh, I've had so much time I'm sick I can't take no more time <laughs> and then I got the weather forecast for that that next day and I thought oh fuck it I've got to say oh. <laughs> so I phoned in bloody sick shot down here and um, we'd gone round the swimming pool and we I said to him, sure I said you sure they were in here he said oh yeah he said they were he said they should Anyway, he's going one way, I'm going the other way, looking to see if anything's coming in or moving, right? And eventually, we see a couple of fish come in, and uh, of course we had floater gear and all that. And he said to me, oh, there's four fish coming round. I said, yeah, I see them. He said, hey, look, big fish. I said, yeah. Anyway, I see them come down, and they come round, and there was this tree overhanging, and I see him, and then they went straight down on this clean gravel. I said, they ain't taking bloody floaters. I said, they're looking for bottom boats. Mm. He said, you got anything in your bag? I rummaged through my bag and I found an old boilie, like, you know. <laughs> so I put that on. I've still got my marker float, my uh, fl controller float, or whatever you like to call it at the time, on the line. I was still set up on your... Yeah. Your so uh, I said to him, oh, I said... Uh, if I get on that bow of the tree, sit on the bow, I said, can you pull the float up, like, so give me the depth? So he's pulled it up, and I sort of let it drop down, and we got it so it was the right sort of depth, like, you know? I said, yeah, that'd be all right. So anyway, he's keeping an eye on the fish, and now he's sort of circling around. And I've, I've flicked my bait down, and the gravel where all the leaves and whatever the tree the shad shadow of the yeah, trees yeah, yeah. you had like little Speckled spots light yeah all over it yeah and uh, i wanted the the bully right in a, one of these clear spots so I, so I could see it so i could see what was going on so i dropped it in there and got it right he said they're coming round they're coming round <laughs> so i'm sitting there and i've watched these fish four of them come round and they're all no, noses are sort of down and they've either hit the line or they, they, they've they gone over the bait anyway and I thought is he taking it or not like no he hasn't they, gone up but it moved the bait mm. so I quickly lifted it up again and put it back down into this spot he said they're coming round again they're coming round again <laughs> And bearing in mind, these fish, although we thought they were big, we didn't think they were 30 pounds, no. you know. He says, they're coming around again, they're coming around again. And I'm sitting there, like, looking, and it's gin clear, like, and I see these fish come underneath me, like, and I thought, has he got that or not? All of a sudden, I could feel it, and he shouted, he's taking it. <laughs> I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's gone out. It's... It's gone under this, because the branches of the trees were hanging over like, it's gone underneath them all, fucking out into the open <laughs> water. And I thought to myself, well, that's all right. I'll fucking, you know, wear I him out, out yeah. there. And then I'm thinking to myself, well, what am I going to do? Am I going to jump down into the water? And I thought to myself, well, I don't really know how deep, deep it is. And I can't swim. And I know it drops right off, like, you know. Anyway, I played this fish right back in and got it to the branch. Uh, so you're playing this fish up a tree at the moment? Yeah. You're, you're hanging over the lake? Yeah. Up a tree? Yeah. Playing possibly yeah. your best ever carp? Yeah. On the end of your line, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I got it all the way back to a branch that was hanging. Skiddy by this time, he's run and got me net. And the net that I took with me was like a uh, a net that I think Bruce Ashby made for me, which was like a stalking net. It weren't a big, <laughs> you know. But anyway, he said, I can't get out any further. <laughs> I can't get out of it. And he's, not by this time, he's in the water. Scrambled down, he's in the water. And he's got the extent, he's got the landing net out as far as he can get it. And the fish was there like and the branch was moving and the, the net was there sort of thing and he was going yeah i said well oh, fucking hell i said he said um all of a sudden he shouted to me bite the line now 
for some reason, I didn't hesitate or anything. Just done it. I just done it. And how I done it, I don't know. <laughs> but I bit through the line. The fish dropped down straight into the net, and he's grabbed it in. I thought, fuck it. Now. Anyway, now I've got to get off this tree. <laughs> I got up. He's got it in the net. I said, is it? He said, oh, it's, it's in the net. He said, uh, right. So it took two of us to get this net because the bank, the bank was up like <laughs> that, like you know, and we're crawling back up the bank. <laughs> and he said to me, in his Yorkshire accent, I think this might be your personal best. He's going, Pete. I said, you sure? He said, yeah, I think it might be. Anyway, he gets up onto the top of the bank and gets the unhooked opens up the mesh and I could tell straight away it was that one Mary yeah because it had this one the single thing. scowl yeah. on the side like I said fucking hell that's the one I told you about he said fucking hell he said look at the size of it so anyway he's run off to get his scowls and I'm looking after the fish by this time we've moved it round to where we could get it into the water and whatever I'm looking after it like anyway he comes back with uh, his scows and his camera and everything a guy turned up I forget his name now Mick somebody who I knew from Kent who was a good photographer mm. and he happened to walk around the corner just as stars aligned for you on that day didn't they <laughs> and he said to me oh, how are you doing blah 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 I said, well, I've got a f good fish in the, in the sack. I said, uh, he said, oh, I've got my camera. He said, I'll take some photos. I said, yeah. I said, I'm fucking glad you Perfect turned up. In. Yeah. So anyway, he's got his camera out, and I thought, fucking hell, that's good. I'm going to have some good photos of this fish. Like. Anyway, uh, we weighed it, £45.6, I think it was. And I thought, fuck you know. <laughs> anyway, we sort of taken the photographs, we've got a video camera going and all that. And I was a bit concerned about the fish. I wanted to get it because it was really hot and I wanted to get it back in the water mm. as quick as possible. Mm. Like. So uh, anyway, this uh, Mick was fucking, he's fucking taking all these photos. And I, so I only took a couple on my camera like because I, I thought, well, he's got, you know, he got a super duper camera on with it. Fuck me. He phoned me up a few days afterwards. He said, I'm sorry, Pete. I said, he said, I've got bad news. I said, what's that? He said, not one photo oh, come no. out. I said, oh, you're joking. He said, no. He said, not one came out. He said, I'm sorry about that. Like, he was, he was fucking absolutely gutted, he was. And, um, but lucky enough, Skiddy took some and I had a couple on my camera. But that was then. Mm. and then that was in July by November fishing the lake through to November like I sort of got to know a little bit of the mm. way, way fish were moving and I found this spot on the south lake that nobody had fished and it was a little point and I managed to make a little track into it and I cut a few bushes down and what have you and I thought to myself, this would be a good spot in next summer, like, you know, for, mm. you know, just something about it. It was just, and it was opposite the sailing club. There was a little island, and there was a lovely gravel bit coming off the island, like a lovely shelf. And I thought to myself, this has got to be the spot, like, you know. So anyway, I fished it in the November, a cut two weekends on the trot, just to get a feel of it, like, mm. you know and who comes walking around was Johnny Holt and he come and sat with me for a, a couple of hours and we was chin wagging like and he said to me oh, he said I, you know, it's a nice little spot I said yeah I said I've made this for next summer like I said you know I said I'm just getting a feel of it at the moment anyway the next summer come and uh I don't know what happened that first night or whatever. I don't know whether I've, I, I can't remember fishing there that first sort of weekend when it started. Mm. But anyway, it was a few weekends after the start of the season. 
I'd been fishing on and up there a couple of places and I kept an eye on this spot mm. and nobody had it, nobody knew it was there like they no all walked fished past on it, it. Or anything no. Like that, no one and uh, anyway this one weekend the wind got up and it, I, I think it was a northwesterly and I thought so this is this it. is the one so I fucking made a I s oh, I'll tell you, I see. When I got down there, Terry Lampard was fishing yep. uh, out of the Douglas Lane. So I had a quick chat with him, and he said to me, um, Do you want a cup of tea or something? Like that? I said, No, Terry. I said, I'm going round. I said, I've got a nice little spot sorted. I'm going to go round there. He said, All oh, right, OK. And you know, I shot round and uh, got myself settled in. <laughs> Next morning, <laughs> that was it. Fucking, you know, I don't know what t I can't remember what time of the morning it was that first take, and it was that Mary again. So this is your second time, Mary. Yeah, and I played it, got it in, sacked it, and it was oh yeah, it was about five o'clock in the morning, mm. and I thought well, it's too early to go and wake people up to come round and photograph it. I will sack it and wait like, so I, I put the kettle on. And uh, it wasn't long before the other rod was gone. Played that, and it's what they called Mary's mate. Mary's mate. And uh, so I had the pair of them. And uh, I went round and got Johnny Allen and Dave Cumps uh, down here. I phoned uh, Walshy up from. C-Max or Legend Sports, mm. whatever it was yeah. at the time. Ian Walsh, was it? Ian, Ian Walsh, Walsh, that's it. Yeah. He phoned the Angler's Mail up, yeah. which I was a bit a not he happy didn't about. No. And they come down and they took over. They were took all the bloody photos and whatever. I'm, I give my camera to whoever it was now, Graham Parsons, I think it was. Yeah. He managed to get one or two photos, which you can see. But the best photos were taken by the anglers now. And do you know what? They wouldn't even let me have the photos. No. No. And it was years later when someone else, another editor or whatever, he found them in the office and he, he phoned me up and sent them to me, like, you know. So it'll sort of come down took your glory away a little bit in, in terms because I know like I say you're quite a private person, yeah. you didn't really want all that and they just yeah. came down and took over like you're saying yeah. and, and done it. But you know, of course I mean, and then it was all in the press. And the next thing I've got I've got the papers coming down to Raysbury, I've got the 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 Daily Mirror and bloody whatever paper coming down. And at the time we used to go into the Percy because the Percy the pub where we used to go and drink he decided that he'd open up in the mornings to do us all breakfast. <laughs> so we, I've gone in there in, like the following weekend. He said, "Oh, I've just been reading about you in the Sun, like the Sunday, the um, not the Sun, the the Daily Express supplement or whatever it was. I can't remember now. It's Sunday Express supplement." I said, "What?" I said, "You're joking." Yeah. So he you said, didn't no. even know about this at the time. You was in these rags. No, and then I've got fucking people coming down <laughs> from the uh, papers oh we want to interview the bloke who's called uh, Mary a fish called Mary like and I thought oh, bl <laughs> yeah. so you literally went from sort of not saying not being a nobody don't get me wrong but you sort of just went from just, just a fisherman yeah. and then almost overnight it's almost like fishing stardom here because of that iconic photo yeah. and, and how did that make you feel I mean like I say I know you don't like that sort of thing so was it a little bit oh Christ you know could you go anywhere about fishing shows well, without being this collared? Is, this, or? Is, this is how it, how it progressed. That little swim that I made... Mary's Point. Mary's Point. Mm. I never, ever got to fish it again because I couldn't get in. There was someone in it all the time. And I had people coming down to Raysbury, pulling up in the car park. Oh, can you tell me where Mary's Point is? Unbelievable. Oh dear, so this is obviously a photo of you after after one happy yeah. chap, you know, can't yeah. believe what's happened. We got some other photos as well, uh, of a few more fish on here as well. I think we've got another sort of five photos odd on here as well. So this was, that your was first. Me first 
Yeah, and I caught that out of the swimming pool. I spent four hours trying to coax this fish to take the bloody little bit of red floater that yeah. I had by the lily pads in the swimming pool. And eventually he took it. But yeah, and that fish turned out to be, because it was like Laney that named after fish, mm. uh, they called that the Hoover. And I okay. thought, oh, well, that's, that's an appropriate name. Like. I was going to say, you know, yeah. it's only worth yeah. a hoover, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got another one as well. We've got this one here. I mean, like, if Carl's boat made carp, yeah. the, these are the carp. It's just unbelievable. Um, you know, again, there. And this is all within a few years of you really fishing on here. You stayed on there after the brace as well. Oh, yeah, you? I was on it. Oh, I fished it for, for quite oh, a few work, years. Almost, yeah. you know. And, you know, like this old fish, I mean, we've got some more coming up as well. Yeah, well, that it's, one, that was at the start. Oh, I'll tell you when that was. It was uh, 80, 81, around about that time, maybe right. 1980. I just had, it was the start of the season, mm. and there was hardly anybody fishing there. And me and Kenny walked around, walked around. Anyway, he decided, I forget where he went to fish, and I decided I was going to fish. If, do you know Rosebury at all? Not, not very well. No. I've never fished Rosebury. Well, you know, used, you young Josh to, you is a, a yeah. media guy. Well, you got Douglas Lane on one side, yep. and on the other side you got uh, Welly Road. Yeah. And the gate at Welly Road, if you go into that gate and drive straight up, you come to like where there was a channel where the two lakes joined. So I've got the bridge across it now. It might have, right. I don't know. Yeah. They blocked it all off right. now anyway. But anyway, it was up there, near there. It was near the old workings. And I'd seen one or two fish out of there and I decided to fish there. Well, the first morning, I lost two fish, one out the other, two carp. Mm. I forget whether I, the hooks broke or whatever happened. So the pins them. gave yeah. up on you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was gutted. I was absolutely gutted, like because it was the start of the season. You hardly ever caught. Yeah, you, know, you you might get one or two fish a year. And then the next morning, on the seventeenth, I caught this one. And I don't know whether it was before this, but I had a tench at nine six, which was a big tench. Big tench, tench. yeah. So anyway, this particular carp that I'm putting back was £26. And that's the one that they turn or call the who, Mary's Mate. Mary's Mate. And that was the first time it ever got caught. So that was his first ever capture then? Yeah. Crazy. And the tench, the next day, I was off to Redmar because I just got into Redmar. Yeah. My first trip to Redmar. So I went straight from Rosebury to Redmar, and when I got close to Redmar, I stopped at the phone box. I phoned up the Angling Times or the Angler's Mail to tell him about this tench, because it was such a big tench yeah. at the time. And uh, they said, "Can you send us some photos?" I said, "Well, I can't at the moment." I said, "Because I'm, you know, fishing." Um, but anyway, anyway, I. I I uh, sent him the photos and I won a couple of rods and they were like Mickey Mouse rods like <laughs> you know but I had a load of fish out of a red mar on these particular yeah. rods unbelievable still got them now? Uh, no unfortunately <laughs> that's right so we got one more I think we've got another one here as well another classic ah uh, that yeah, I'll tell you what fish that is that's the fish they called Malin's fish ok yeah. and I had it I had it two or three times from £20 up to what I think it was about £34 there. Yeah? And I, could, I thought, myself, I can't understand why they called it Malin's Fish. <laughs> oh, you know <laughs> what I mean? That's yeah. favourite, that one. <laughs> so you, this was, you, you had that three times, you also had Mary three times. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Okay, so we've got one more left on there, Josh. Oh, that, yeah. Oh, look at oh, wow. What a now, crazy. I had that on floater. That's another one that uh, a bloke he was the bailiff on Furnish Lakes he was a friend of uh, Kenny's and he came down to see us and I'd had it out of uh, the North Lake at 
36 pounds something like that and he called it olive he nicknamed it olive because it looked like olive oil yeah, like yeah. you know and then this particular shot is when i called it on floater so you've had this out one of Dredger twice Bay, well. yeah right on float yeah on floater and there was no one on Raysbury to take a photograph so I sacked it and I drove to Longfield and got Richie to come and <laughs> Richie photo McDonald's come and he to took the photograph <laughs> <laughs> crazy so look that's a, a you know you've, you've done some serious mm. work on Raysbury and you got the rewards there is oh so we got sort of the, the last one that's oh yeah cracking car well, I'll tell you what that's a bit of fluke that because I'd given up on Raysbury yeah and I was fishing on uh, Kingsmead Islands yeah because uh, Ian Walsh had given me permission to go and fish the islands before it was set up for mm. the island fishing so I was fishing on Halton and I had my little boat rowing boat and uh, I was going off on the islands and this particular weekend when I got down to Halton to pick up my boat because I was leaving my boat there and everything mm. the wind and the rain was just horrendous and I thought I, ain't, I can't get out there in this weather <laughs> like. and I sat in the lodge drinking uh, cups of tea with Dale Smith who was running at the time hoping it was going to die down a bit but it never did and then I thought to myself well, I don't know I'll go to Raysbury for the night do the night in Raysbury and I thought to myself bloody hell this wind it's doing a south westerly it's pumping into the dredger bay I've got to get round onto the dredger bay that's the spot so anyway I jumped in my van drove round drove into Raysbury gone round the dredger bay there's a bloody bloke in there like. <laughs> and I thought ah oh, shit so I didn't even stop to see who it was I just backed up jumped me off yeah. and I thought to myself where shall I go and I thought ah fuck it I'll go in no dredger in no cart bay get the wind behind me I'll be, you know, be well tucked in away in there so I've gone round there and I've got the van right behind me as a wind break I put me little uh, I had a tiny little uh dome thing yeah. which you couldn't get a bed chair in you had to put an <laughs> air mattress in and I, I put that up I thought ah this is alright anyway I flicked around and I found a couple of clear spots not far out flicked a couple of baits out got in the bag and fucking <laughs> I was in a way thinking to myself I should have been out treasure bay should have been out treasure bay like anyway next morning I woke up fucking coots picked me bait up fucking gone up fucking got it in unhooked the coat i thought well uh, it can't be a bad spot if he could find it like so i put it straight back out again anyway next thing bloke from dredgy bay has come round he said could you come and take some photos for oh, me God, i yeah. thought oh, <laughs> i fucking knew i should have been right so i said yeah yeah and it turned out to be the bloke that done that Cutswolves Bates. Right, okay. I forget his name now. I don't know, I can't remember. Talking. But anyway, so I've gone, reeled him, gone round, taken his photos for him. I forget what he had now. He had uh, 30 pound, whatever it was. And he said he'd heard these fish crashing in the night. Where you wanted to be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I thought, ah, oh, bloody hell. So anyway, I've gone back round and I thought to myself, should I put my baits out? I, should I, just, and I thought, looked at me, everything was soaking wet through the rain and whatever. I thought, oh, well, I might as well wait and let it all dry out before I pack up. So I flicked them both out, put the kettle on, sort of had a cup of coffee, and I was slowly packing my stuff up, and then my dome, which was still <laughs> soaking wet, I moved into the sun, like, to get the fucking get it dried out. Yeah. Now I'm sitting here just on a chair. And then Phil Thompson walks round the corner. Oh, hello, Pete. I ain't seen you for a long time. I said, no, I said, I ain't been here. You know, I said, I've been fishing elsewhere. It's the first time back. All of a sudden, the buzzer's gone. Ripped off. Ripped off. 
started playing this fish, it's tried to get me round into this other bay, anyway, eventually we gets it back, he said to me, fucking hell, he said, I can't believe it, <laughs> fucking Mary, when it, 51 pound eight, I think it was, and um, so he took the photos for me, Jesus. and I, it was a year since I'd been on there, and I went back for that one night, and I haven't been back since. Because you've never returned back there, and look at that there, look, good yeah. God, good Lord. Wow, so has that sort of wound it all up for you on Rosebury then, really, after that? Was it yeah, really? well, it got too... Uh, got think. a bit busy, I should yeah, imagine, after your really, brace shot yeah. and all of that, and then yeah. Handler's Mail, which, again, is for some reason yeah. why you don't want it going in media, because, yeah. you know, like yeah, we're saying, nowadays, you know, most people know they've caught a fish before, you know, yeah. someone else, because the yeah. bloody phone's telling them, yeah. you know? So that was it, really, for you on there. You just thought, you yeah. know what, it's all got to be yeah. busy now. You've, yeah, you've done the well, business. I didn't think there was anything else worth, uh, you know... There weren't nothing bigger than that mm. in there at the time or anything, so, yeah. Final days, but we have got one more little, it's just a little teaser photo, because we're going to wind the clock back a little bit now, and I think mm. somewhere on there is a quick photo of the Yodney fish. Yeah, we're now, back. we're not going to go into detail, this because you have sort of given us a bit of hint that you might come back. Yeah, and yeah, do a little right. chat with us about Yovney, um, another iconic brace of fish there. Well, that was the record brace at the time. At the time, yeah. yeah. And this was 70... 78. 78. <sighs> wow. Okay, so look, don't talk too much about that one because I'm going to try and hold you a word and I want you to come back and tell us all about that. Yeah, but, no, sure. um, what are you doing nowadays? I've heard you, you you like your boat as well. You've got a boat, haven't you? I've got a little boat, yeah, yeah. It's my, it's my mobile bivvy. <laughs> 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 I've heard you've got an oven in it and you've, you've done some serious work to it. So oh, that's yeah. just how you, you, you play with your time now. You've you got your boat. Yeah, and yeah. I uh, enjoy just that. enjoy fishing or whatever comes along, really. Mm. You know, I just, uh, yeah. Enjoying life a little yeah. bit, you know. Well, look, thanks so much for coming in. And we are going to hold you. We're going to glue you to that chair and make sure you come back in yeah, again. Sure. And thanks to your wonder. Wonderful daughter cat for yeah, coming with sure. us as well. We drove you down here and Pete, you've blown me away. Um, you know, mesmerising, mate. And thank you so much for coming in and look forward to getting you back in that chair. So yeah, sure. fingers crossed. Thank yeah, you. There's a lot more to talk about. <laughs> Going by your books, which we looked at, and you know, it's not just carp. You know, there are other yeah. parts within your fishing. Four double figure tench. You know, there's so much we can yeah. chat to you about. Um, so yeah, look forward to getting you back in, mate. And uh, hopefully England are, are, are bringing yeah. it on tonight on yeah, the, on the semis. That's so right. Yeah, we'll yeah, let you get on the road. Crossed. Fingers crossed, mate. And yeah. I'll see you soon. Take All care. All right. Thanks Hello, very mate. much. Bye. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>